Stone is predominantly known for making a premium boot at a really great price, and secondly, for being one of the only companies that's making a really high quality boot that's made in China. So today I'm gonna to cut one in half and see if those things are true. So the story behind Grant Stone is a pretty interesting one, and I think it's part of what sets it apart from all the other companies who are making their footwear in China, because most companies, they design their footwear and make it in the country of wherever the company's based. And then over time, they eventually move all their production overseas because we've seen it happen a hundred times and eventually their quality drops and they do it to save on material and production costs. But in the end, their, their quality drops and a lot of the people are disenfranchised with the company. But what's interesting about Grant Stone is it started in China and it can even trace its roots all the way back to the 90s in China when the co-founder Wyatt's father was making Goodyear welted boots with a family in China way back in the 90s. And then in 2010, Wyatt, the co-founder, moved to China six years before Grant Stone was even founded and worked in a factory overseeing production and learning the trade and, and every aspect of boot making. And then in 2016, finally decided to start his own company and that's where Grant Stone started. And if you've seen any of my videos before, you, you've probably noticed that I lean pretty heavily towards favoring American-made goods. So this, is, this will be a pretty interesting video to do for me because I, I've gotten in trouble before by generalizing Chinese production by calling it cheap Chinese junk and I, people get mad at me in the comment sections. But there's three issues that I see constantly over and over and over from Chinese made footwear. The first one is lack of quality materials. The second one is their, their construction quality usually is pretty terrible. And the third one is their quality control is also terrible. And I'm really interested to see if these boots can break that stigma I have about Chinese made boots because from the outside, these boots look really, really good. Now let's go over the boot information. So the brand is Grant Stone. The model is the diesel boot. The leather that I got is the Saddle Tan Veg. They weigh one pound, 13 ounces. They retail for $360 and they're made in China. And this video is sponsored by Grant Stone. And just like always, I try to swing some sort of discount for you guys. So if you wanna save $25 off a pair of these, use the code ROSEANVILLE25 at checkout and save yourself 25 bucks. So thanks again to Grant Stone. Now let's go over the information that we can gather before cutting them in half, starting with the upper leather. So this is a two to 2.2 millimeter thick vegetable tan leather coming from the Italian tannery Badalassi. And they're pretty well known for their high quality leathers. A lot of times you'll see them used in high quality boots and shoes. I've used their leather before and I love it. And these guys don't just use that tannery. They also use Horween and CF Stead. They, they, they use a lot of the well-known footwear leather manufacturers or tanneries. And it's 2.2 millimeters thick, which is, is really good to see because a lot of times you see in these dressier looking boots that have a lining, they really skimp on the thickness of the upper leather. And I specifically really like this leather because it's veg tan and I, I lean pretty heavily towards favoring veg tan because I, I love how it ages and I love the way it takes on patina and how it uh, changes with time in a very quick way like this i wore this boot for maybe a couple weeks um, a month or two ago and you can see how much of a difference there already is between these boots you know this one i, I put a little bit of a shine on it and it's already starting to roll and, and get a lot of patina in the toe and starting to darken so i i really love vegetable tan leather it may it's not quite as durable as a chrome tan leather but for a nice boot that you're trying to develop a patina with it's hard to beat. As for the lining leather, so this is a full grain chrome tanned leather that's 1.2 millimeters thick and it's tanned in Milwaukee, USA. So with that lining leather being 1.2 millimeter and the upper leather being two to 2.2, you get a pretty substantial upper leather that's, that's pretty thick. As for the construction of this boot, so it's a 360 Goodyear welt with the reverse split veg tan welt. And it's a really pretty welt. I was actually really surprised at the precision and how well they pulled this off. You know, if you look at the close details, it's a really pretty welt. A lot of people don't like that split welt or that storm welt look, but I think this it looks really good on this boot. Sometimes it looks a little bit clunky, but this boot pulls it off really well. And then to the sole construction. So we can see that there's a leather midsole and the outsole is a leather outsole, obviously, and it's a five millimeter leather outsole. And the thing that I really like about it is it's, they, they've dug a channel where the stitching is. So you get a little bit more wear out of this outsole before you actually start wearing through those stitches. And then to the heel block. So this is a full leather heel block that they actually make in-house. And I found that really interesting because a lot of times these companies will 
wholesale buy these the heel block and just kind of shape them a little bit in-house and then slap them on there but they actually build these in-house which i thought was really cool and then you got that little rubber top lift at the back there to give you a little bit more traction and then the little brass nails and as for what else is on the inside so like i mentioned it looks like there's a there's a leather midsole and i know there's cork filling in here and a triple rib shank so it sounds like it's a pretty sturdy construction but we won't really know until we cut it in half and as for the sizing on these boots so they run true to your Branock size at least in my opinion I, I'm a 10 on the Branock and I got the 10 D and the 10 E and I got the E because a lot of times these dressier style boots or these plain toe boots they run really really narrow because you want that that thin pointy silhouette so I got these to wear and I wore these ones around for a couple weeks and they were pretty roomy and I tried these ones on and these ones actually fit me better. Um, they don't look like they're that roomy but once you get them on they're surprisingly roomy and then after doing a little research for this video that's one thing that Grant Stone focuses on is, is making a clean silhouette that looks really nice but that's still comfortable to wear. And that brings us to the, the style of these boots. And these are a pretty versatile boot because you can wear these in a fairly formal situation, not like a black tie by any means, but they look pretty dressy, but they're not so dressy that you can't wear them with a pair of jeans and not look out of place. So, so far pretty impressed. And I guess the only thing we have left to do is cut it in half and see what else is inside of these. So let's get to it. Okay, got it cut in half, kind of, kind of uh, hit that, sh that triple rib shank is super thick. I, I had a hard time getting around it, but let's see what's inside. Now that we got it cut in half, let's go through the layers starting with the outsole, working our way up. So we got that five millimeter thick outsole. Then above that, you can see a little teeny line of, of white, and that's a layer in between the leather midsole and the outsole that helps bond them together, but also prevents squeaking. Because if you've ever had a pair of shoes with a leather outsole, sometimes those, le those, those layers separate and they, they slide around and start squeaking every time you walk. So that's, that's there to help bond those layers together, but also to help prevent it from squeaking. And then you've got the leather midsole and then the heel block, that hand-shaped leather heel block with the rubber top lift. And then up from there, we've got the cork filling with that triple rib shank. And these triple rib shanks are really sturdy. You know, I, I had to go all the way around, almost to the outside of the boot to get around it. They're, they're literally twice the thickness as a regular steel shank. And they just add a little bit more support and a little bit, um, prevent a little bit more torsional flex as you're wearing the boot. Then up from there, we've got the leather insole. And 
A lot of people love these leather insoles because you start to get that footprint in the boot like you can see here. And then up from there, we got that three millimeter pour on patch at the heel with the lining leather on top. And you can see some of the nails that, that are driven into the insole, into the heel block to hold it all together. And then one really, really interesting thing I didn't expect to see for this price range of boot is this is a full leather counter. So a lot of times you'll see a leather counter like we saw in the common projects and the red wings, but it's a, it's a leather board counter, which is basically all the loose leather they collect, grind it up into a fine fibrous powder almost, and then reconstitute it into a flat sheet, almost like a cardboard. Versus this is an actual solid piece of leather that's wrapped around and shaped in the form of the counter. So that, these solid leather counters are, they're a longer lasting counter, they shape to your heel better. Um, it takes a little bit longer to break them in, but this one isn't nearly as thick as what we've seen on some of the work boots, like the NYX counter, super thick. That takes forever to break in. This is a pretty flexible, pliable, but still thick enough to give you some support. And then on this side, you can see in the lining, the handwritten size and I'm guessing batch number or model number. And to the toe counter, the toe stiffener, it's a thermoplastic toe stiffener and that's pretty much it. So now that we've been through all the layers, let's go through the pros and cons of this boot, starting with the pros. So the, the first pro was is the fact that this is pretty much all a vegetable tan leather boot. You know, there's not a whole lot of synthetic materials in here. The next pro is, and I didn't really talk about this yet, was is the overall experience of getting these boots. You know, it's a pretty premium experience. You get like a handwritten note, it comes with a shoehorn and a little, canvas pad to try the boots on so that if they don't fit you, you can return them without scuffing up the leather outsole. And the overall look of these boots are really, is another really big pro to me because they're a comfortable boot with a wider toe box that don't look like a wide toe box. And they come in the extra wide widths too, which is really, really an uncommon thing, especially for a smaller company, because getting those extra wide lasts, are, it, it's an entire new investment to get the wider widths. And maybe the biggest pro of this entire boot is how obsessed Wyatt is with making his perfect boot. You know, and it really shows by the fact that the, even though this is a, a boot made in China, you would expect it to be made of leather that's all sourced from China to, to save on costs. But all the parts of this boot are sourced from different countries and different tanneries all around the world. You know, the, the upper leather comes from Italy, the lining leather comes from Milwaukee. All the different parts of this boot come from different tanneries and are hand chosen for specific for, properties and, and purposes. So that alone is a huge pro to me and, and a, a sign of a, of, a, of a man obsessed with quality and a company obsessed with making the best boot that they can. As for the cons, there's not a whole lot I can really point to. You know, I, I, um, I don't really see many cons in this boot at all. Other than the natural cons that come from having a leather sole shoe that, you know, it's not quite as leather resistant and it is a little bit more slippery but they have rubber sole options. Some people aren't gonna like the way the seam goes right up the middle of the counter on the inside and that the counter cover isn't double layered up how the upper stops and where the counter begins, but it's a dressier boot and to keep that slim silhouette, you almost have to do it that way. If it was a work boot, I'd have more issue with it, but I think it's fine. Um, some people don't like vegetable tan leather uppers because they aren't quite as versatile. They are not as water resistant and um, you gotta take care of them a little bit more. So that can be a potential con, but overall, I don't really see any cons with this boot, especially for the price. So that kind of brings us to the, the last question I have. Does it check those three boxes that, that those stigmas that come from a Chinese made boot or, or shoe? The, the first one being materials. Clearly these aren't poor materials. Like I said, they're sourced from all around the world, specifically chosen for their purposes. The second one is construction. These boots are really well built. You can tell by the, the way that they channel the stitching on the outsole and the precision on the welt stitching and down to the way that they hand shape all the, the heel blocks in house. And then to the third one, quality control. So I got two of their pair of pairs of boots and I don't see any serious quality control issues. You know, I d I've looked pretty closely over all these boots and they're about as perfect as they get. You know, there's a couple scratches in the upper, but that's just for me moving them around. So to me, they, it breaks those stigmas behind cheap Chinese made junk that I've kind of got in trouble for making fun of or, or uh, getting after. So to me, these are really high quality, premium made shoes that are made in China. And you, if you didn't know these were made in China, you would pick them up and assume they were an Italian, a high end Italian made bespoke shoe or an American made shoe because they're that high quality. And if you do get a pair of these, 
Um, send me some photos through Instagram over the next few months of how they're wearing and how they're wearing in because I love to see how the same boot worn by different people wears differently and how it breaks in. So thanks for everything you guys do. And if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing because I'm trying to get to that 300,000 subscriber mark by the end of the year so we can give away these things, give away some free boots. And we're on track to do it, but just barely. We've got to keep going at this rate to make it. So thanks for everything. See ya.